So we're getting involved with IPv4 here, and let's talk a bit about networks and subnets. So we're not going to get into subnets uh, and actually creating subnets yet, but that'll that'll come in forthcoming videos a few from now. But let's talk about how we break down networks. So you might have seen in some of the examples here where I've pulled up my own addresses, uh, I have the following IP address. And no, you're not going to hack me with this information. So here's my local area connection. I have the following IP address and the following subnet mask. So you see that we have uh, a defined size to our network. So we're going to get more into subnetting and what, what that size actually is, but the subnet mask helps us define how large this network is and how many IP addresses I can have on this network. Uh, and then I can change that subnet mask to make it larger or smaller. Uh, and I can take this main subnet, which is uh, called a classful address that we'll get into, and then you can break it down into small pieces such as this one, which is actually a subnet of this classful address, but we'll get into that. Uh, so let's let's take, talk about network size. So what are some ways you might break down a network? So one of the things you may want to do is decide uh, based on, if you're in a large organization or something like that, you might want to break it down based on um, job duties or something like that. You might have uh, an HR department and you might have, you know, a finance and then the all-important IT department that has access to everything. <laughs> and then you might have um, the servers or your data center, whatever it is. You might have, um, you know, administration or something like that. So these you might want to break apart into their own IP space so that uh, they can communicate amongst each other uh, or they can uh, be limited in their access, which we'll get into with access control lists or firewalls, uh, which is makes it easier to do when they're all on you know their own specific subnet. Uh, but you might notice here I've mentioned servers, but servers, everyone's probably going to be trying to talk to the servers in some fashion. So you're going to have to allow some sort of access to that subnet. So we'll get into that more coming forth, but uh, you might break it into you know this method or you might be able to might break it into something uh, more uh, physical in nature. So let's say you have uh, like a you have a unit in Philadelphia. And that's your central location. You might have a place that's out in New York City. You might have a place that's uh, down in uh, DC. You might have uh, a location out in uh, oh, I don't know, Detroit or something. And you might want to break those into different subnets. So this might be, you know, one subnet, and this will be another subnet, and so on, different network. And then within these, you could then break them down into other networks. So you could actually have HR, IT, admin, and then the same here, you could do the same thing. You could have an HR out here and an IT out here. You know, whatever might make sense for your uh, your business. Uh, some reasons for this, it makes it easier for you to manage things. One of the biggest problems with NIT is IP address management. There's software out there to try and make it easier for you. A lot of places rely on spreadsheets to try and deal with it. You end up having administrative problems if you have multiple IT people trying to maintain it. Uh, you know they might not f remember to update. You know your your old your spreadsheet or something like that. Uh, you know if you have things logically defined uh, through some sort of process such as this, you know it makes it easier when you're looking at the traffic as well. You could say, okay, this guy is coming from 192.168.14. something. I know that's the HR department out here in Detroit. You know, I don't know why he's accessing Facebook right now, but we'll talk about that. You know, the uh, the DC down here. Um, you know, maybe that's where all our uh, main data center is. In, you know, down in Washington DC is our data center. I know all of the IPs coming from here, such as 10. Dot something, uh, are all of my servers down in the data center. Uh, and if I see traffic coming from that in an unexpected location, 
maybe there's uh, you know a problem or something like that. Uh, it also helps you reduce in broadcast uh, traffic, and we'll we'll talk about that with broadcast storms. But if you break it up into smaller subnets, you'll have less chatty traffic on your network using up your bandwidth. Uh, you can also break it down based on security, like I mentioned. So we could add firewall rules here, or what we call in Cisco access control lists, uh, which can say, you know, if you're coming from the IT department here in Detroit, you can't access the admin systems over here in Philadelphia. Um, you know, we can put rules here on these interfaces between these two locations that say you can or can't do that. Uh, we can also do it within these different groups. So we could say, you know, IT cannot access the HR computers as long as these two go through some sort of router or layer 3 switch preferably uh, we can put access lists there to define uh, whether or not they can do that um, and it, it just makes it simpler to, to manage as well so uh, and for expansion purposes you might want to define you know certain ranges here that are unused but in the same repeatable pattern uh, so for expansion so Let's say Detroit is like uh, 172.16. something, uh, but they're growing very quickly. I might also want to reserve 172.17. something for this same location, but not use it yet. So you know, you, but want to make sure I don't use that somewhere else. So it's it's on the uh, it's on the shoulders of the IT network engineer to determine whether or not he wants to do that and how he wants to. Uh, manipulate his address space uh, to make the most logical sense and it's usually something that you want to think about from you know the size of your business the the growth of your business uh, how fast the growth is you know does it make sense to do a physical location type separation if you only have one location maybe not maybe it makes sense to only break it down based on department uh, a lot of times you also see subnets for printers so that don't, all the printers are on one subnet. All the workstations are on one subnet. All the servers are on one subnet. And within the workstation subnet, that's broken down further into HR, IT, admin, uh, corporate, uh, executives, things like that. Uh, so then the subnet mask will be different for each one. Uh, and we'll talk about that. But this could be different sizes. So for the data center, we might have this as like a slash 16. And... Uh, these might be slash 24s, which we'll talk about what that means. Uh, these could be, uh, each one of these little slices could be like a slash, I don't know, 25 or something like that. You know, whatever we want to do. Um, you can make them larger or smaller based on your needs. Uh, that's one of the great things with uh, the RFCs that came out in the last 20 years or so, is that you can uh, manipulate the size of your networks which we'll talk about that uh, you didn't used to be able to do that you were stuck with one size now we can kind of mutate our network in such a way that we can choose whatever sizes we want for our needs and that's really an important part of designing your network if you're starting out with a location that just has one subnet uh, a lot of times you'll run into a place that just has like what you saw on my computer 255 255 2550 well, that's a slash 24 network. We'll talk about what that means. But um, that's, that's just one open network to everything. That's where you might want to start uh, redesigning it to incorporate some of these ideas of logical separation so that you can then uh, separate access between the different groups within your organization.